Good morning, my friends. This is Paul, and today I'm going to be reviewing to you Tetris for the Game Boy, finally resurrected on Switch Online after being delisted from the 3DS eShop. Pretty soon everything's going to be delisted from the eShop, but that game was a pretty early purge for licensing issues, I expect. Explaining the basics of Tetris seems pretty unnecessary, as pretty much all of you know what Tetris is by now, but I'll do it anyway. You have a bunch of falling blocks that are in various shapes, and you have to try to make lines. And every time you make lines, then the blocks disappear. And your objective is to try to clear the screen as much as possible. There are two game modes, A-type and B-type. Wording was really weird in the early 90s. A-type is where you try to get as high of a score as possible. B-type is where you have a set amount of lines that you need to clear, and once you do that, you win. What I like about the original Tetris, at least in B-type mode, is that the game doesn't randomly switch speeds and levels on you. You have 10 levels of difficulty, and in B-type you also have the option of having the field have blocks already there to further add to the challenge. And once you stick to a difficulty level, that's your level. You're not going to have the pieces randomly speeding up like they do in the later Tetris entries. One thing that might disappoint players of more modern Tetris entries is that this version is a bit less forgiving than the other games. Like, for starters, you can't hold any of the pieces. You can only rotate left and right since the Game Boy has only so many buttons. And you also can't, like, cheat the system, for lack of a better word. Like, when I play Tetris, sometimes the pieces will be falling too fast, and I'll be able to quickly adjust the position of the Tetris piece if, say, it hits the other pieces too soon. But in Tetris for the Game Boy, as soon as it even touches a millimeter on the other Tetris pieces, it's locked in place, which was especially annoying when I played on higher difficulties that otherwise would have been a breeze in Tetris 99. This version is relatively straightforward compared to what you might be used to in other games. As mentioned, there are only two modes, only three songs, and only ten difficulty levels. However, one nice touch is that the game rewards you for being able to do good enough on the higher difficulties, as in Type A, the one that's basically the high score grabber mode, you get a rocket launching off if you get a really high score, and in Type B, if you clear level 9, then you get a man in a sombrero playing a little bit of a violin song. It doesn't last very long, but it's still a nice way of the game saying, hey, you beat it. You didn't just... It doesn't just automatically loop from the beginning, as most other puzzle games of that era might have done. There's not really a whole lot to say about this entry, as it's just Tetris. It's still really addicting, and still a blast, but there's also not that much to it. Once you beat all the difficulties and grab a high score, that's kind of it. To the game's credit, despite being on the Game Boy that only had two colors, the pieces are pretty distinct from each other as the game managed to add textures to each of the pieces. On Switch Online, you can turn on Game Boy Color Mode, and the pieces are even more distinct. So, would I recommend getting this game on the original Game Boy? Yeah, if you don't have any other way to play Tetris. But realistically, do you have no other way of playing Tetris? It's on pretty much every platform imaginable, though surprisingly not the Wii U. So there are plenty of options to get Tetris. I think it could be worth a try, just don't use this as THE Tetris experience. There are definitely far better options. On the Switch alone, there's Tetris 99 and Tetris Effect, which further refine the experience while keeping the classic gameplay intact. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the video. Special thanks to my patrons Matthew Rakowski and Spoon Ghost for supporting me financially. The link will be in the description if you'd like to join my Patreon. And until the next time, remember to keep the faith, stay epic, and God bless. Bye!